This winter, California was hit by several powerful atmospheric mm -hmm. rivers. In February alone, downtown Los Angeles saw over a foot of rain, making it the wettest month for the city in 26 years. That's a lot of rain there, and all of that rainfall has had much of the California coast on edge. And ABC chief meteorologist Ginger Z has more on this story. While this is the way that we may imagine the California coast, the reality is not always as serene. You can see that at the end, it actually, the asphalt has fallen off, the concrete that was around the edge is gone, and there's like a big gap down there. This past winter, landslides shutting down roads around Los Angeles. A critical railroad in San Clemente closed for more than two months after a landslide. And those dramatic images of homes on the brink in Dana Point. I would be very nervous if I lived there, certainly. Coastal California is on the front lines of extreme weather and climate change. Pretty much bound to happen, knowing that I surf out in front of those houses all the time. And you can see the erosion of where the house is in the property line once was, like 15, 20 years ago. It's a long-term issue. Sea level rise, wetter storms, and erosion nibbling away and sometimes biting off large chunks of land. At least 70% of California's population lives on the coast, and these coasts are constantly changing. Erosion and cliff collapse are part of those changes. That's why Adam Young and his group want to study it, especially after big storms. We don't just have people's homes, but we have numerous state parks, recreational facilities, we have military bases, we have power plants, wastewater treatment plants, railways, highways, all these things are threatened by erosion. So it's really important that we track these events and understand how our coast is changing over time. Adam says landslides and cliff collapses can happen hours, weeks, and even months after a big storm. So we set out with his team to get a closer look. You can see a lot of the cliff is fractured. These are pieces that are more or less detached which are going to come down to the beach relatively soon. The team uses drones and trucks with something called LIDAR. There's a laser that shoots out pulses at hundreds of thousands of pulses a second at different angles onto the beach and onto the bluffs, and that bounces off, and we record that information, and from that we can make a three-dimensional map of the coastline. Adam hopes to use this info to develop an early warning system before a cliff collapses. I think we're, we're kind of looking at it in two different ways. We're working on one as a sort of a site-specific landslide detection system where we have sensors in the ground and we're trying to look for signals that we can observe before a catastrophic event occurs. The second sort of approach that we're looking at is a regional approach along a particular section of coastline. For example, like if we have an event like we've had the last couple of days, can we identify, say, maybe the number of landslides we can expect and, and how big they are over a particular area and make a regional probabilistic prediction or warning based on a particular type of storm or wave event. And our many thanks to Ginger for bringing us that report. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.